Hello everybody, Anomaly here, uh, and welcome to another video on my Miss Weaver play and commentary of that play. Uh, today we'll be discussing uh, Mythic Odin, uh, as we finally did get it down, unfortunately post nerfs, um, so I'll be discussing a little bit of how the nerfs impacted my guild, um, and potentially also how it'll impact your guild if you are on this fight. Um, before we get into it, uh, quick shout out again to the Monk Discord. Um, I will be posting a link to the Discord below, uh, definitely check it out. Um, guys over peak at Serenity are great. Ask your questions, um, anything you can think of, you know, gear questions, rotation questions, things like that. Uh, they help me a ton, um, and I'll be kind of commenting. A lot of what I comment today is based on some of the work by, you know, some of the great misweavers over there. Um, so, as we get into it, let's jump right into the video. Again, like I said, this is post-nerf. Um, basically, uh, the biggest changes for at least our guild was just the health differences. Um, the adds have a lot less health. Odin has some less health, so it shortened a lot of the phases. We had saw less phases, um, and I'll kind of discuss how we get into that. So, um, without further ado, uh, let's jump right in. Um, so on the pull, um, one of the things I've been doing a little differently, I didn't want to comment on this, is you want to try and throw out your uh, Renewing Mist at about 8 seconds of the pull timer, and then uh, use Thunder Focus T and pump out two more REMs. Really, only this is the only time you'll ever do that, right on the pull, uh, just to get those flowing, uh, get those ticking out there. Um, so here initially, um, you're going to see it's kind of a, a back and forth. I talked about this in a row. You're going to get Horn, which requires you to spread, and then you're going to get Shield, which requires you to kind of clump up in that line. Um, so basically, all you're really going to be doing is um, kind of spreading and clumping, spreading and clumping. As a monk, it's pretty easy. Um, there's not a ton of healing, so you can kind of like either run, um, but with both roll, tiger, I use Tiger's Lust on this fight. Um, through all Tiger's Lust, um, you know, I we use our my use my transcendence to to reset the fight, so I don't have that here. But um, you know, roll tigers also have plenty of movement. Um, so as you can see here, I get an add in phase one. Um, really, you can probably DPS the add. There's not a ton of healing <laughs> going on, so it's actually like pretty simple. Um, probably could have done a little bit more damage or any damage to the add, um, but I ended up just kind of healing through, um, and kind of doing uh, doing some healing there. So. As you can see, roll super helpful. Got to my rune, plenty of time. Was able to pop manatee here uh, and get out some initial EFs, um, and then was able to kind of put a vivifier two during it to kind of get that double mastery proc. Um, I did pop GG going to that. Probably should have popped it about 15 to 20 seconds earlier. Um, you kind of want GG to kind of. Uh, get out there and get healing um, while there is stuff to heal. The first horn is probably a really good place for it. Or sorry, the first um, unrearing blast is a good place for it. And that just puts it on cooldown. You're just going to use it on cooldown the rest of the fight. It lines up pretty good, at least with the RDPS, with Phase 3, uh, as you'll see as we get in there. Um, now, as you can see, we're ignoring these ads here. Um, this is one of the big changes. We wouldn't. Ha we normally would have to do this second um, Blast Phase, as Phase. Um, but because of the less health on both Hindle and Hi Heimel, I forget their names, um, the two ads, <laughs> uh, we just skipped it. Um, I was able to kind of push right through, right towards Odin here. Um, so phase two, um, as you can see, I'm actually at 100% mana, which is great. Like I said, not a ton of healing going on in phase one. Um, so you want to kind of save it. Phase two is really where there's like the most healing. Um, I feel like over the course of the fight, phase three there is, it's kind of hectic, but phase two is really where it kind of all... It goes to kind of like shit really quickly, we could say. Um, there's a bunch of like spears coming out. Um, you can see the balls. You're going to have to move. This, uh, there's a ton of movement. You're going to waste mana like this. that essence font right there. Like half channel because the sphere was coming. Uh, it would have stunned me and could have died. So um, you kind of just want to... I want to kind of move, watch your feet, watch your positioning. You know, like I said, with roll, uh, with Tiger's Lush, you have great mobility. Um, so move around as, po as much as possible. Um, and uh, just just keep keep your rems up. Keep your stuff on cooldown. As you can see, rem was a little bit delayed there. Um, what I like to do is I like to get to my rune pretty much as soon as possible. Uh, the reason being is I like... I want to be able to be protected and then be able to set up in the center of the room so that I've got the most coverage with Essence Font um, going into the phase. As you can see there, I get stunned. It's stupid of me. I saw it come through the boss. I probably could have missed it. So, um, But yeah, I mean, we're at you know 80% on Odin, um, pretty much about uh, you know, two third or a third of the way through the phase, uh, really good on mana, still at 100%. So definitely could probably spam out a little bit more. Um, but I do like to conserve them. You'll see at the end of the fight, I, I can definitely use more mana in this phase. Um, 
the big thing from just an overall fight perspective, um, working with the other healers around cooldowns, is you always want to have a cooldown for basically any of the add abilities and then the blast ability, right? Um, the the horn and probably unrearing blast, you're going to want uh, throughput cooldowns. So we use um, Trank pretty much on, I think, two of the three horn or two of the three blasts we get on horn we end up using um just in uh an aura mastery um, and a commanding i think on the the second one if we get it in this this version of it um and then my revival is used on this blast here um to kind of top everybody off um and keep everybody high so uh other than that it's just kind of repeating the flow so now you know we'll we'll get the shield out again um We'll use a cooldown uh, on the shield uh, just to keep people topped, and then we'll go back into another ad phase and things like that. Um, so the idea here is you're just going to want to keep your movement up, watch where everybody is, watch where your abilities are going off. Um, this this phase is really just about avoiding damage and trying to put out as much healing as you can. Um, and don't get frustrated uh, if you're going to miss casts or, or shorten casts, right? Um, what, we, what I found, at least personally, is that I would rather... Uh, skip a cat, like sk shorten an EF cast or cancel a cast uh, to kind of move out of something. Um, with roll, you're a little bit less forgiving. Like you can, if you're already casting and a shield pops, up, or sorry, a spear, spear pops up underneath of you, which is a little swirly things on the ground here, uh, you can finish that cast and then roll out. Um, but for the most part, you're going to want to just keep moving. I get really lucky here. A ton of blues. It's awesome. Um, just want to kind of keep moving. Um, watch your watch your feet and just avoid stuff. Uh, make sure you get the right color right. So like, there's a good example where I kind of let the essence podcast finish the channel. I was able to roll out of the sphere, take zero damage. So, um, so here you will get another horn. I believe this is a commanding. Um, so really just, you kind of just want to cool down. And uh, the reason being is like with horn and then the spear explosion, because when it, all the spears pop up, they do AOE damage. Um, you're going to want just a little bit of buffer. Um, I think everybody at this point has had the 35 trait, which is, which is pretty big, um, just from having more st like stamina and things like that, uh, to kind of survive this stuff. So as you can see there, I get kind of screwed up, get, end up getting stunned, um, but yeah, we progressed, pushed to phase three. One of the things you'll notice there is like we didn't get the next ad phase. Um, again, less HP, we were able to push just a little bit quicker. Um, so the weak aura in the upper left, I'll talk about real quickly um, as we kind of go through this. But that just kind of kind of does your positioning when you're in the left and the right quadrant. In the center quadrant, we just always go towards where the colors are. Um, so as you can see, when I get blue, it shakes blue. Uh, and then I just go to the blue section. I'll post the weak aura code below. Um, just so you have it, but that's what we use to kind of separate. Touch your guild about how you're going to do this. So, um, but the keys here are again, you're because of roll and movement. We try and place all the tornadoes towards the edge of the room, um, putting them anywhere in the center. Um, just kind of screws up um, with movement. People get stuck in them. People get hit with them. Things like that. So, um, as you can see, pop a mana potion there. Um, I don't know if I really needed to because I have, you know, 70% mana going into this phase. Um, I can cast a ton more Essence Fonts. Um, the nice part is if if I would have used GG just a little bit earlier, I could have got him out here, um, which would have helped with the movement um, piece of this. But, you know, I was a little late with it, so GG gets popped on cooldown coming up. I do have a revival up. We do have some, um, a little bit of a rotation here. We use our cooldowns when the brands actually explode on everyone. Uh, so I think the next brand explosion is our Trank, which our Druid uses, and then I would get the one after that. So again, it's just really about using your abilities, um, making sure when you get the colored brand, you go to the correct positioning um, and just ram on cooldown, you, you know, your normal stuff. This phase is a little hectic um, the first time you get to it, but once you kind of get the flow, it's, you know, it's two of these tornado casts go out and then you get the brands, right? As you can see, boss at 14%. Most of the raid is alive. We're going to end up killing this. Um, but yeah, if, if needed, my revival was up and available to use um, and kind of help the team there, right? Um, but yeah, that is Mythic Odin. This was, of course, our, I think our second kill um, on Odin. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's the fight's fun. I, mean, I find the fight a lot of fun. Um, it's just a lot of environment. You got to be able to 
to move, basically do two things at once, which is kind of watch the raid frame, see the people that need it, and then also move and avoid uh, a bunch of different mechanics. Phase two, super hectic. You're going to cut cash short. Um, just don't get frustrated. And, it, you know, as you can see at the end of the video, I ended with like 40% mana. Could have used a bunch more. Um, so, again, rolls your friend. Um, don't overroll. Um, you know, I'd like to save my rolls to get to the right brands, and then if I get kind of stuck in a spear um, and, and need to roll emergency, use it then. But always, you know, kind of roll up. Um, and then Tiger's Lust if it rolls down, basically. Um, and you need to move a little bit quicker. So, um, but yeah, that's the video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, things I can do better, things I you want me to stop doing, um, leave them in the comments below. Um, thank you very much and have a happy new year. I think it's happy new year time. So thank you very much, guys. We'll talk to you later.